On today's episode, we'll take a look at another low-cost printer, the Prusa Mini Plus. It's got an auto-level system built in, but it also came with an under-extrusion issue I had to fix. I'll explain all that and show you the details of this printer, and then we'll compare it to this one, the Creality Ender 3 V2 that I installed an auto-level system on. About $300 versus $350 to $400. We'll see if the difference is worth it on today's Film of Friday. Film of Friday is brought to you every week by the generous donations of these Patreon supporters. The Prusa Mini has been out for a while. This is a Prusa Mini Plus, which has been out maybe six months. The Plus means it's got a temperature compensated auto level, which is really nice. So I purposely waited to get one of these. I wanted a small, quiet travel printer, and it fit the bill. But I wanted to make sure they got the bugs out of it. So when I took it out of the box, set it up, my first print was this nut and bolt, and it printed beautifully. So I thought, okay, I did the right thing waiting. But then I couldn't even get through a chep cube. Five layers in, it would block up. I'd have to clean it out, print again, five, six layers in, blockage. So I tried other prints, cleaned it out, tried a Benchy, couldn't get through it. I tried a bigger print with less retractions and stuff. Still, after a while, blockage. It was so frustrating. I finally talked to some people on Twitter and they had the same machine. They said you need to either put a longer PTFE tube, which there's a small section in here, I'll explain, or you can loosen the grub screws and push the heat block up, which is what Prusa shows on their support page. And I should have went and looked at that. But once I put a longer PTFE tube in there, it started printing beautifully and I started getting really good prints. So let me show you how I fixed it. This is a 3D print of the Creality hot end. The PTFE tube goes all the way down to the nozzle and then the filament goes out the nozzle. And the coupling up here keeps it tight against the nozzle. If it retracts and this coupling is bad and can't hold it, you form a gap. And then you get filament filling up that gap and that's where you get a blockage. And so there is a fix on Creality is to put a piece of PTFE tube that gets trapped between the nozzle and the coupling with a washer up here to stop it from moving. And that's what the Prusa Mini has. Only it's got coupling all the way up here at a heat break. And then there's a guide that guides the filament to the nozzle. So the idea is to trap that piece of PTFE tube between the coupling and the heat break. But if there's any gap that is able to form, it'll form a blockage. And it'll form quickly because that's a cold zone. So the idea is to keep the PTFE trapped in there by using a longer piece of PTFE tube so it can't move. So that's how I fix this thing. It's pretty easy. You take off the coupling on the top and then there's a coupling that you have to unscrew. First unbolt it and then it hand loosens. So you take that all the way out and I can get access to the little piece of PTFE tube. I just grabbed it and pulled it out and then I went and found a longer piece of Capricorn tubing and cut it just a little bit longer than the original. I chamfered the edge so it would go down into the heat break and I pushed it all the way down and made sure that it was flush to the top of the heat sink. Then I screwed in that coupling again and this is what traps it and then I tightened it down and then I put the PTFE tube back on, tightened the coupling and it was printing great from there. So I've been able to print a bunch of chep cubes. I couldn't get any further than this before and it would clog up. I printed a bunch of benches that would fail. I finally got a really good benchy. I got their whistle, that's a sample print, and then I printed some accessories to make this portable. One is a handle, so I can easily pick it up. I printed at a 0.2 layer height. This is some protopasta PLA filament. It's fantastic, it came out so smooth. And another thing is this comes with a separate spool holder, which I don't like, so I printed this one that I found on the Prusa forums. It's a two-piece design. I used the same filament at a 0.2 layer height. It came out so smooth. And then I extended a piece of PTFE tubing. I'm not sure I love this, but it helps guide the filament in to the extruder. And since then, this thing has been printing beautifully. Now, despite making this all portable and getting rid of that spool holder, I still have to carry around a power supply because it comes with a brick separate. It's not built in. So it's not an all-in-one. That's one thing I don't like. I have to carry a separate part. But it's mostly portable. And some of the other features I do like about this is it's got a USB drive instead of an SD card. So you can just plug this right into your USB drive, plug it in here, and it'll read the files. And it's another thing. If you slice with the Prusa slicer, I don't know how it does it, but when you scroll through the files on that USB drive, it'll show pictures of the print. 
So you don't have to look for a title or a scrolling title. It'll show you a picture of what you're trying to print. Very nice feature. This does come with a metal removable bed and it comes with a second bed with a rougher surface. I can't find mine. I set it down somewhere. I think I've lost it, but I print mostly on the smooth surface anyway. Works really well. And with this temperature compensated auto level, it does a great job auto leveling, which is perfect when I'm traveling around, taking this thing to different spots at auto levels. I don't have to worry about adjusting a bed every time I move it. It works quite well. Another fantastic feature of this guy is its higher temperature capability. This has a true heat break. The PTFE tube does not go down to the nozzle like it does in an Ender 3 or Ender 3 clone. It goes to a heat break, so it separates the PTFE from the heat. Therefore, you can go up to about 280 degrees on this guy, so you can print higher temperature materials. ABS, no problem. Uh, probably do nylon on this thing. I haven't tried it, but you can do a lot of higher temperature materials on this machine that you can't do on under three. That is a really nice feature. Now, of course, people will ask, which one should they buy? Well, it really depends on what you want. Now, you've seen the Ender 3 on my channel many times. I've showed how to upgrade these things, how to fix them, how to put like BL Touch on it, and then third-party firmware because the Creality firmware is terrible, and how to use my Cura profiles to get good prints. And I got this thing printing beautifully, $300. But I did a lot of the work. This one, adjusting for the auto level sensor is all done through the LCD and it works beautifully. You just step through, it's very, very well done. The Prusa slicer is designed to work with this. Download it and use it. You don't have to load any special profiles or anything. So this is really more of a complete setup for someone just getting started. But this guy is if you want to tweak and play with it and make the printer into what you want and save some money. So it really comes down to what it is that you want. If you just want to print and have fun, this is probably a better way to go. This one, you're going to have to do more work. Another thing I like is this one is quieter than this one. The fans on this guy are so loud, I can't sleep with this in the same room. This one, I could have it in a hotel room. It wouldn't bother me one bit. Now both of these require some assembly. This one took me about 45 minutes. I've put a lot of these together. This one I've only put one together. Still took me about 45 minutes. And I have printed some things, a spool holder, the handle. This one I did add this spool holder on the side instead of the thing that comes with it on top. And I did install the BL Touch. So is it worth an extra $100? If you don't want to go through all those steps of adding BL Touch and stuff, yeah. Otherwise, to me, it's not a whole lot different. I do like that this is quieter but I like the bigger build area. And as far as print quality, I'll show you a close-up of these two CHEP cubes. With my profiles, I'm getting a little better quality out of this guy than I am out of this guy with the stock slicer settings. I'm working on a profile to improve it, but right now this guy prints just a little bit better. I'll show you a close-up of these CHEP cubes and you should be able to see it in the word CHEP. You can look at this and see that the Ender 3 V2 has given me a little bit crisper, a little bit cleaner prints than the Prusa Mini. I do like this printer and I think it's worth the extra $50 to $100 depending if you get the kit or the fully assembled over this. But I can't say I don't like this because I do like this machine. I like the quality I'm getting out of it with the auto level on it. Works great. I like that I can just easily feed in filament. This one I got to let the machine feed it in. So it's probably the proper way to do it, but I like the quick and dirty load it myself. So there are some things that I like about this machine that this doesn't do, but I think it's worth the extra money. If you're just getting started with 3D printing, you'll probably be less frustrated using this and you are this, as long as you don't have that under extrusion issue. Hopefully they fix that. When I started 3D printing under $500, you had three choices and none of them were great. The fact that you can get either one of these and buy some filament and buy some tools and still be under $500, it's fantastic. So if you've got either one of these machines or both of them, let me know what you like or dislike about them in the comments below. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos that are popping up. And if nothing else, click on that CHEP logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.